thought I would um, make a video response to the question can you put out more power on hills than on the flat or even downhill I've got a rather interesting bicycle for testing this out because it has a MVOLO CVT and my homemade automatic shifter basically what this means is that we can take gear shifting and cadence out of the equation as long as I keep within around 8 to 30 miles per hour it will maintain constant cadence because I've got it in constant cadence mode and the setting is around 75 rpm so what I'm planning to do is climb this hill go over the top down the other side whilst maintaining around 250 to 350 watts I'm going to speed this bit up because it's just a hill climb at the steady gradient and explain um, some of the things on the screen the um, Cadence setting is the yellow marker around the power dial. The green is the real cadence. I've got speed, miles per hour. Offset is a value used in the equation to compensate for uh, cadence error. Uh, we've got power meter zero error, which is basically the raw value from the strain gauge amplifier. And we've also got the battery percentages. Uh, the automatic shifter one varies because it's just tied directly to voltage and it's being charged and discharged um, so that's why it's fluctuating. And here we are just approaching the top of the hill now. Okay let's maintain the power. And as we go over the hill the speed will increase because the power I'm putting out is going into horizontal acceleration rather than fighting vertical acceleration which you're doing when you're going up hill because you have um, vertical speed. Um, speed is increasing but uh, now I'm starting to come up against air resistance, uh, aerodynamic drag um, and the speed is pretty much leveled out now. Um, the 300 watts I'm putting out plus whatever gravity is helping wi me with is um, going into drag, aerodynamic drag. Um, my cadence has crept up because the hub has now reached overdrive and the road speed is too high for it to maintain the 75 rpm. As I come around the corner it, it will uh, drop back down again. Um, I'll go back to the, yeah, pretty much back to the setting of 75 rpm now. Um, and I'm putting out 350 watts. Um, as far as how that feels on the bike, it's really the same. It's just a resistance. As long as the RPM stays the same, then it's just the resistance feels the same. The bicycle obviously feels different because I'm going a lot faster. But other than that, it's, it really doesn't make a lot of difference. Um, whether it's downhill or uphill. Um, that's the one thing that really frustrated me about derailleur gears was that if there's any change in air resistance or gradient then the bike changes its speed and so does cadence because it's tied directly um, and then you have to change gear and it kind of disrupts the power transfer for a fraction of a second anyway um, but you're constantly you've got changing cadence it goes up and down up and down depending on what gear you're in. Um, the CVT completely isolates you from that and I can just put out any power I want at any time. It either, either I speed up or if the gradient increases or slow down I can maintain the same power output. Um, yeah, it's just it really doesn't make a lot of difference with a CVT and automatic shifting. Um, there's no gear shifting to worry about. Um, and that's been pretty much down the other side of the hill. Um, I will put up uh, a screenshot of my Strava for this bit that I recorded. Don't think it makes a lot of difference. Uphill, downhill, flat. And um, yeah, thank you for watching.